Hello, and welcome to All the Horrible Things, episode 78, Squid Games, The Challenge. We've never talked about the actual show, have we? Uh, maybe briefly when it first came out. Okay, um, because as you know, as I probably brought up on the cast before, I'm absolutely obsessed with competition reality shows. So when this came out in the fall of 2021, I was beyond ecstatic. Uh, granted, it's a Korean show, so you have to watch it with either the subtitles or it dubbed. I think I watched it twice with both when it came out because it certainly was better hearing the actual in intonations of the actors themselves. But uh, it, it was kind of funny to then see the translations of the subtitles. They didn't always marry up is what I remember. Um, but what did you think of it when it first came out? What was your opinion? Well, I, I was a little afraid because it was so popular. It was almost like an instant hit. Everyone was talking about it. And I, I yeah, like I, I said, I was just a little worried. It was maybe like a hype. But when I started watching the show, you just get pulled in immediately. It's <laughs> it lived up to all the hype, if you asked me. Yeah, it, like was relentlessly tense. And I honestly feel like. This incarnation, the challenge using real contestants, 456 real contestants with $4.56 million on the line, lived up to the show. Uh, I mean, for the most part, I feel like we're getting uh, analogs of all the characters we saw in the actual uh, written version, um, and, then, and then some. Uh, I'm curious, do you watch any competition reality uh, normally? No, no, I, I, I actually don't tend to watch a lot of reality show at all, competition or not. I, I've just never really got into it. I certainly remember in the early 2000s when it, like um, everything was sort of being remade from the, the UK, you know, Big Brother. and uh, Big Brother's I, actually Dutch, uh, but Survivor what? was initially <laughs> there you go. Uh, British, I, I, I think, if I recall. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just never got on the bandwagon, and I still have not been a watcher of reality shows. It, it's you know, to me, it's like there's a lot of just a really amazing narrative stuff out there, and not to say you can't watch both. I just prefer one over the other. Now, having said that, I was immediately pulled into this reality show. Good, and that's why I think you should really reconsider. And maybe give Survivor, maybe not Big Brother, because Big Brother is a little cheesy a, a lot of the time. But Survivor, I think, is what inspired this initially, Squid Game. Because um, yeah. it's a smaller version of it. And I am not a reality TV watcher. I'm a competition reality TV watcher. And I do consider them very, very different genres. I can't defend exploitative regular reality where you're just watching rich people like the housewives, the Kardashians, just soak it up, soak up all that glory for nothing sort of thing. But what I like about competition reality is that you actually get a sense of how to write a narrative and the necessary archetypes to create a compelling narrative. One, of course, that includes villains. And I can't wait to talk about some of the villains that pop up in this Squid Game. Um, for the record, for those listening, we have watched the first two drops, which means episodes one through nine we nine. have watched. And I honestly feel like we could have done a cast on every single episode. Um, but given the nature of December and probably want to hit up some maybe Godzilla or Christmas stuff in the future. We're going to try and talk about it here. Maybe come back and talk about the finale afterwards. Um, yeah. Let's, let's start right off the bat. Red Light, Green Light, episode one, 456 people. What did you think? Because ultimately this is a, this is a silly kids game that they managed to make r really intense. Well, I thought the reality, the challenge version of the show did a great job of not only capturing the excitement uh, and large scale of the game, but I, I thought they also did a really great job of raising the stakes because, you know, there's nothing fun if someone was just to come around and say, you're out, you're out. They actually, and this was what was... Um, made me a little worried, like, is this going to be successful? But I thought the the introduction of the exploding, like, squib on them yes. was was brilliant and necessary. And I think it added a level of drama 
that, you know, could have been missing from this. And, and what the show... Completely agree. Yeah. I heard that people actually thought they were being shot by paintballs at first, but, like, you know, because we've done stuff in Evolving Squibs, we knew what was going on. But it was so effective. Have you read any of the behind-the-scenes stuff about this challenge? No, none. Okay, so it seems like it took all of five to ten minutes to do, right? They tortured these people. Uh, and I'm okay with that, honestly. But they woke them up at 3 a.m., they ripped them out of their hotel rooms at 3 a.m., put them in their jumpsuits, and red light, green light took eight hours. Wow. So when you do green light and then it hits red light, you could be standing there for an hour, just standing there for an hour. And if you remember, there's an instance where there's girls squatting, and it's like, and then she's like, I can't do it anymore. It's because she'd been squatting for 40 minutes straight. Wow. You know, at that point, I have I had a little more sympathy when I found out about that, because otherwise, oh, you quitter, come on. I can't squat for three minutes there. Um, but th it was it was a very different uh, game than it, it comes off uh, on TV for the for these people. They put them they put them through the mill. Yeah. So and someone who like myself does production and, you know, filming, like uh, even if it's just like interview stuff. I can totally relate to why they may have done and not just to torture these people, but to pull out in this pilot episode to pull out specific emotions and expressions from people's faces. <laughs> the cameras are, are catching so much intensity and what you might. Yeah, what you might watch in like four minutes of a game in the episode and what you're telling me <laughs> makes so much sense now because it seemed so dramatic it really did, and I love that they told the people you gotta pretend die when your squid pack yeah, you gotta lay explodes because there were some fun deaths and like oh yeah. to go in that first round and the I mean we lost at least 150 to 200 people right of the 456 pretty much yeah. cut it in half right off yeah. the bat. Um, what would have been your strategy had you played red light green light in terms of the freeze? Because there, I noticed there was different strategies for people to try sure. and not move. It's really hard. Uh, honestly, I don't think I would have done well on any of these challenges just because I'm so antsy and impatient. <laughs> so now you're telling me that you're standing there for eight hours. I probably would have been like, eh, I don't even want your millions of dollars. I'm going to go sit down. But no, my well, strategy. I'm, sitting down was an option, though. Some people did do that and got across the line. Yeah. I mean, we know that that probably wouldn't have been the most effective way of doing it because getting up and getting down, they did such a, an amazing job of showing the smallest movement right. with, with people. Well, I think they had a sensor. You know how we have on our smartwatches and stuff? I think it was really based on a sensor um, when it was detected that you moved. I mean, I love how they cut to these fun sequences where you're seeing through the little girl big statue, which is just so fun yeah. in itself. That yeah. imagery is so perfect. Um, where you see all the ones that have moved popped up in red. I don't think that's happening. I think it's literally like a, a motion tracker on the That would make this, the a ton of sense because what I'm thinking of as I'm watching this is who on the other end, I mean, they would have to have a person watching each individual. So like yeah. for every competitor, there would have to be somebody keeping their eye on them, and that just wouldn't have made sense. So including some sort of... Uh, uh, what you're describing, like a, a motion detector, that seems a little that's bit more fair. Fair, it's fair, fair. That right. That's exactly what I was going to say. And that's a that's something we're going to talk about throughout this cast is fairness and how it does does diverge from the show in in that certainly toward the latter half of the game, mm -hmm. they've become such comrades that there is almost a <sighs> sense of we got to do this fair. We're not going to be as uh, cutthroat as, as we did see in the show, with, with few exceptions, of course. Uh, a couple other things I just really want, want to mention about Red Light, Green Light really quick. Apparently that room was freezing, too. People wow. are suing Netflix that were part of this that got chopped off in that first one because the conditions were so bad in that room. Like, some people felt like they were getting hypothermia, their, their hands were turning blue or something. It, it just seemed like it was it was not nice. And what I also thought was fun was that, you know, all the Red Guards, right? Mm -hmm. um, all the Red Guards with the shapes on their faces were all crew. So these were all people that would normally be there. And they would be there with the cameras, so they never actually saw the crew. So you would have the camera people there or whoever's around them. Uh, they're, they're not actors. They're not just playing the guards, in other words. They have their own, they're the gaffers and everything. But right. in these, 
awesome, awesome, iconic suits. That's pretty uh, fun. That's really it, clever. It, it is. It's just as someone who has watched these competition reality shows over the course of the last 25 years tw- or 23 years, pretty much Survivor in 2000, I think is when it first started. Mm-hmm. Um, the exponential growth of what they can do now to actually deal with 456 people is just so like, like scary and cool yeah. to me in a way like overlord sort of, is this how real life is too? <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Yeah. I just, I kept thinking about the uh, allegory of, of, you know, our world to what's going on here. Um, which I think is, it was, you know, purposely done that way. And that's, no, I loved it. Okay. Yeah. Red light, green light. Who stuck out to you? Like first, first episode, who's sticking out? Which character? Uh, I, I think I'd have to say the, the, the best friends who show up because it doesn't seem like the greatest strategy to go there with your best friend. The one guy he even talks about, and I think they both get eliminated. Maybe, maybe actually, maybe just the one, but the strategy there that you're still going to be competitive with like your best friend, that doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I think even what you were just describing a little bit ago by, you know, episode nine, when you've got this camaraderie and these people actually, uh, becoming really good friends, I, I don't think that's how you play the squid game. <laughs> so it stuck out to me immediately when you've got two best friends coming in here. And then the mother and son, uh, obviously, uh, you know, st- I think it's just all about you having decided to go on a show with, with somebody that you, you know and care about on a co- competition. It just doesn't seem like the smartest idea. I don't hate the idea if you don't let people know. You Correct. Know, if Correct. you seem like you've gelled, you know, organically, then it could really work to your advantage. Yes. Um, but in the case of the mullet boys you're talking about, right? Or two yes, mullet guys. Yes, yes. Which I guys. actually really liked both of them. I thought they were fun characters. Um, but the one sticks around. Uh, he, he Brighton, I think. No, no, no. Is that his name? Um, it's so hard Kyle. to keep track. Kyle is kind of the more alpha of the two with yeah. the mullets. He sticks around and becomes part of our gang boo gang. Oh, we're right. the gang boo gang. You're right. But, you're um, right. His buddy, he, his buddy makes it through red light, green light, but he gets um, taken out in the honeycomb game. Oh. Uh, which, let me, what was, what was that called again? Has a fun name. With the uh, cookies where you have to... Delgana. 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 Uh, huh. Yeah. So he, he goes because I think he ends up with the the star. Um, so yeah, let's... Uh, I, I completely agree. Who's standing out is the mother and son, obviously. Um, yeah. You got the mullet boys. Um, who else? Because Trey is the mom. His, his I'm sorry. Trey is the son to Leanne, the mother. Yes. yes Jada yes. pops up. Jada becomes kind of a pretty big character in the first half of the show. She's number 97. Um... She's a self-declared underdog. Um, and then, I don't know if you remember, but uh, they're playing f- Frank Sinatra uh, <laughs> so during the final run it, with all these scary, desperate people just running in slow motion. It was yeah. just like, it's so fun to me. Like, I can't tell you how much fun I, I felt like this, this show marries the competition reality sure. with the horror. We are talking about this uh, specifically in a horror podcast because... I I can't even begin to think of the stress these people were going through. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly, as it went on further and further, uh, let's talk about Delgana and how they picked the shapes. Um, I can't remember if in the show they had to line up like that. To pick I think the they shapes. did. I think they, they did. did. But okay. but you didn't know in the TV show in the narrative what the game was going to be. You just picked a, a shape, and in th- right. because they were playing so many games from the actual narrative they knew we knew what was coming next which is why we'll talk about a different game later when they mix things up but i think it's really tricky this this game because there's one shape that seems the umbrella that just seems so much more difficult than the other three and you would think it'd be maybe more like split like two and two but man no one is like impossible frankly i think the star is pretty hard too but um, what I don't think they did in the narrative version is have the leaders of each line go in there and then mm. have to decide what shape no. they did. I think it was like you end up with the shape you get based on the line that you were random, randomly Correct. Ended up in, right? Correct. Like, Correct. This added amazing drama yeah. because you have three sets that can't come to an agreement 
and get obliterated. I love the first set. The guy's like, okay, guys, let's just have a race. And then he's like, let's go, let's <laughs> yeah. go. And he runs to the side of the wall and, like, starts running immediately. It, it was just... He was trying to steamroll. Uh, what would you do in that in that scenario? Uh, I don't know. I think you, you have to just sort of... Um, kind of take one for the team in a sense where you just know by pick, picking even the worst shape that it, it's still giving you a shot to continue because they did not know. Well, the first group didn't know they were going to get eliminated if they couldn't come to a decision. But after that, yeah, teams, we know what's going to happen if you can't decide and they still can't decide. <laughs> and I think it's really fun about this show in general is that it brings out the child in everyone. <laughs> it really does. Not like just your the true fun self of self comes through. Yes. Not just the fun of it, but how you deal or crack under pressure. So mm-hmm. many times people would get, would get so stubborn, they, you know, kind of like cross your arms and, and pout. And no. that's not how you play the game. Suicide. Absolutely yes. not. Yes. Um, that being said, when we do finally get to that fourth round, we get this character, Spencer, um, who was the, you know, the first person in line four, right? So he's he's being told by you, whatever you don't take the umbrella, don't take the umbrella. And this guy, then you cut to his talking head and he's talking about how, oh, I'm a pretty gullible guy. I used to wet the bed. And then he goes in there and oh he's my struggling, God. struggling, struggling. This poor this poor guy, I guess, uh, you know, he was, he's grown up really religious or whatever. And uh, anyways, I remember the line. Do you remember when he's like, okay, guys, I know this is going to sound sexual, but if I do take the umbrella, will you promise to lick my cookie? Yeah. Yeah. He did say that. <laughs> and then I... we got a big chat and there's like, yeah, bro, I'll, I'll, I'll lick your cookie. Yeah. And then they're uh, like, you cannot help each other. And, but that, <laughs> exactly. I, I genuinely felt <laughs> Really, ba- even in the interview, when he's yeah. just talking about how pathetic he is, he even uses the word pathetic, and he's a bedwetter, and it, it it's it's I don't know, I don't know. It's just this is this is the issue with competition reality that people have is that you do have people kind of just like I mean, good luck in a job if that's the first thing that pops up. You know what I mean? You, yeah, pathetic. You're acknowledging that you can't do anything and that you will. A pushover extraordinaire. Yeah. I mean, it is very exploitative. Um, but at the same time, it made for high drama. And the given that there is 456 characters, uh, to be lucky enough in that moment to get that guy to pick it, these are the sort of things that people bring up and is like, well, maybe he was a plant then. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to suspend my disbelief and say he's not a plant. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, his, his reaction seems so genuine. Is yeah. why. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's just I don't know how you get somebody to be a plant on a show like this when that person knows that they don't even have a chance at this at the millions. It just doesn't seem yep. believable that they would have plants. I'm sorry. No. And oh, my goodness. When he's, oh, oh, this was the beautiful moment because he did end up with the umbrella and I was wrong. The mullet <laughs> friend who goes this round also had the umbrella and he was sitting right next to, uh, what's this guy, Spencer, number 299. And yeah. he's like, he, uh, this, the mullet guy dies right next to him and he kind of like looks at him like, oh, poor, poor you, but also at the same time, oh, I'm f- effed too. And then like he starts retching over his Honeycomb, like he's so yeah, uh, yeah, under pressure and sickened the, by what is happening around him, he's about to vomit. It the, was uh, high drama. The amount of time that that guy almost threw up or cried, and the amount of crying on the show is a whole level of vulnerability as well. But to almost throw up <laughs> in front of all these peers, it just seems. That you, I, I guess it just shows that not everyone is cut out for the pressure. Right. I completely agree. I don't know why he would have applied to begin yeah, with. Yeah, you're not. Um, <laughs> and even just like oh. think about how everyone was so happy when they came in that first round to do Circle. The guy who got Circle, he became a hero, right? Yeah, yeah. The first three were all just worshipped and then nobody would even look him in the eye. He could look them in the eye sort of thing. People calling him names, you know. Yep. Uh, it was. It was... Fun. I'm sorry to say it. But it, it, was. Was, it was. It was really entertaining That's to watch. Why you're watching the show? Yeah. 
What would have been your strategy in terms of the honeycomb itself? Well, I, I think you have to, and it makes so much sense. The, the licking makes so much sense. You have to create, I mean, these things are, are brittle and mm-hmm. to get it, to get it moist like that, I hate that word, uh, to get it in that <laughs> position where you know that it's, it's, it's less likely to break. You, you just, but again, I'm so impatient. I don't know if I would have been able to do a game like this or a test. Um, I think with anything with, with, uh, pointed corners, I would soak the, the, the points of the corners, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then do some licking. Sure. So you're not worried about then like a tip being, uh, cracked off, you know, I would yeah. soak that those, especially in like the triangle, the tips of the triangles, I would, I would kind of pool, um, my spit there and then more lightly with the rest of it, or, yeah. you know, reverse that order but try and do something along those lines because then you can take i think they give you a paper clip just kind of like pin just the edges and in theory it would just like kind of pop off um but what do i know i I mean i'm tempted i want to see if i can get my hands on one of these i was just gonna say wouldn't that be kind of fun just even like around the holidays to just bring those somewhere and see if you all can figure it out yeah that would be fun just saying yeah like an advanced white elephant sort of situation yeah the best president if you're uh, able to do it. You know what I don't do um, well don't do well with are is like a giant clock on the wall. I, I was never a good test taker in school because I was just so worried that everyone was finishing before me that I became obsessed right. with that idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the extra el- added element of pressure. Yeah. hundred percent. Because some people didn't crack it, they just ran out of time and that was it. Right. And it's just so fun to see people just get that squibs exploded i know i know dash their hopes of 4.56 million <laughs> one thing i wanted to mention is we are introduced to the bunks before they go to the honeycombs because they're all ushered in there after Red oh Light, man Light. yes and we get to see this just like i think it was a airplane hangar they used um in london this took this took place over 16 days in london is where it was filmed um and you get people kind of playing smart about like oh let's share the money at the end if one of mm-hmm. us gets it I don't. I don't know if that's smart or not. I'm. I'm I was kind of wondering because the people you do see do that obviously don't make it very far. But the mom were really introduced to her cutthroat nature early because she's saying she's pointing <laughs> over to like this group of bros. I'll have no problem cutting one of those if I get the chance. <laughs> she was savage. This yeah. woman, Leanne. She was, um, and, and incredibly entertaining. Incredibly entertaining. She, both of them. I mean, it was so funny because later in the season. Um, you know, Roland is described as one of the he's one of the greatest people I've ever met. He's like a one in a million guy. Uh, and I honestly, I like Trey a lot. I couldn't help but root for him. Right. I did think uh, the mom was going to outlast him. Though, I did, which, too. Huh. I did, too. I'm surprised uh, that didn't happen that way. I, I don't know what it was. I just think she seemed a little bit more... Um, I, I don't know. I, maybe it was just a competitive because she played college sports. I think she said she went to, to Kansas and played basketball or something like that. But I just think she was cut out more uh, for this competition than, yeah. Oh, my God. I, I want to see her play Survivor. She'd be so badass at Survivor. <laughs> um, so after Honeycomb, he, oh, oh yeah. So, um, so you'd take the circle or would you take the triangle? Because there was kind of like uh, tit for tat about which was actually the easiest one. I think I would have wanted triangle. I think making a straight, oh, straight lines... Instead of putting that of pressure agree. around an, an arc like that. Yeah. Maybe. I think I like triangle better, too. Yeah. I'm with you on that. So after that, they go back to the bunk, and we got 119 left. Start with four, five, six. After two games, you're down to 119. Yeah. Um, I love seeing the dynamics start to form between people. you got girls talking about how they're going to befriend the big guys to protect them, which is a staple of all competition reality. Yeah. Uh, but then you got some uh, like uh, this one little faction of girls, including Leanne, the older woman, the mom, um, talking to the one girl who actually beat the umbrella honeycomb. Right. Uh, and I was so impressed. And she's the, the other one's like, you got to get a tattoo of that umbrella on you. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. That is an accomplishment worthy of a tattoo. That is and a actually, great tattoo. I, I can't wait to talk about someone here uh, coming up who actually has gotten a whole sleeve arm tattoo of his experience. Oh, yeah. Game. Was it Frank? Was his name Frank? 
Rick. Rick. Rick, Rick the old Rick. guy. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. When I was doing a little research, a lot of people were suspecting that he was kind of the plant, like in the actual show. You got the old man who was running the whole oh, thing. Oh, right. I can tell you right now. Rick, the old sweet, gray-haired uh, man who has all these fun hobbies, the beekeeper, um... Mara's one of her dearest friends. That's her uncle. I am one step away from no Rick or, way. You know, one Kevin Bacon stuff. Absolutely, and it, he did celebrate his birthday. That's um, insane. He a- absolutely love the Gang Boo Gang. He is the one with now the sleeve. It has Gang Boo Gang <laughs> tattoo on it. It's got the the Squid Girl, you know, from the first one on there as well. That's uh, amazing. I, I I was told this very funny, um, act, like story of when he was younger and mm-hmm. um Amara's friend was his niece and one time he went over there and he ushered them into the bedroom and then shut the door and there was a live bat in there with them <laughs> and the ba- <laughs> he was just like messing with them but then he comes in there and says okay I'll save the day and uses a tennis rat- racket to beat the bat to death in front of these kids <laughs> <laughs> so this is like a, a what do you call it exclusive Rick story for you uh, for you fans out there but apparently he's just like the sweetest man in the world that's um, in real life that too. is insane so, that the, the I connection mean, when we found that out you had to believe we were root for gang yeah. boo, gang, boo gang across the board I uh, yeah um, he yep. was just so fun I, I loved Rick tremendously yeah at um, the start and he obviously wasn't a plant. Yeah, at the start, he kind of came out and seemed a little sheepish, you know, and I think it was smart, you know, kind of hide your, like, who you are. And then next thing you know, it, he's everyone's favorite. They're singing him happy birthday. Everyone's in love with this man. Yeah. That's why I really thought it was a mistake. I'm trying to remember her name, but the one who takes out... Um, takes out Rick during the Jack in the Box uh, test. Oh, right. Because as people uh, might remember, there's games, but then there are the tests there's that the test. in the bunk. And, oh, I wish I could remember exactly who it was, but it was a girl who's made it through a lot. I wanted, It was Fal- Falasia. Falasia's given the opportunity to take out three people. She very smartly takes out the guy with the advantage who was standing up there right, that was right next to her brilliant. moments before. That was, that was a baller move. But then she goes and says, I'm going to take out these two because I know they're part of an alliance. And okay, mullet guy's strong. He's going to do well at competitions. But the Gangbu gang had three other huge guys that she could have gone for instead of Rick. I don't know why you take out the old man. I thought I that was a really dumb move, personally. It may maybe just been a, a popularity thing, you know, like... Um I don't want anyone who's popular to continue because, you know, the sooner you can break up that could be, groups. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. He was so likable. And as you learn, as the game goes on, the relationships that you form really are a huge advantage. You you have to make friends in, in this. Yep. In yep. a way I hadn't anticipated. In a way, you see a little bit in the narrative, but because of the added games to this challenge version, it is... So important. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's go back. This is where it starts to deviate from the show because up till then we've dealt with the same games. Um, well, oh yeah, let's talk about the test before we move into warships. But there was a test, and this, this is, is where we're introduced to our first villain. Um, he's like the big jockey guy who's loud and brash. I'm trying to remember his name. Um, I think it's Brighton. Yeah, the, the, Jesus had to struggle, so he has to struggle too. Um, right, and God made him uh, an overconfident douche. Yeah, he, he he's being. he's like the college athlete, right? Like the yeah, he quits college to finish, or like he was like a right. senior in college. I had two Drops classes out. left, and I just dropped out. Yeah, and, you know, real smart. I'm supposed to do this. I did think Leanne hated him, the the mother, but she was smart enough to go there and have that one on one with yeah. him and really yeah. get a sense. And she knew there was the likelihood that he would have control or power at some point. Um, I thought it was a smart move on Leanne. Leanne was just like so cunning, yeah. conniving. I loved how she played that game. Um, but he did have an adversary. Um, during this bunk session with this guy, 198, 
Husnin, who is kind of like this little weaselly guy who kept calling him frat boy. Uh, and then there's this like yes. really, in, you know, tense scene where we have Brighton go up to him. who's like, call me frat boy one more time. So like, you yep. hit me. No, I'm not going to hit you. But if you call me frat boy one more time, well, we're off the show. You better watch your back. Sort yeah, of what a- and then who's then just like instinctually says, OK, frat boy. You know, he's just like this <laughs> yeah. little bitch. He's okay right there. There's a great moment in that in that too, where he's like the, the Brighton or whatever his name is. He's like, yeah, cool. Wait, what? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like he didn't yes. even realize that he was still. <laughs> oh boy. But then we get the comeuppance. I'm so glad we got to see that because even though I was kind of rooting for the weasel over the jerk, yeah. um, Husnin's weaselness gets him expelled because they bring in the phone uh-huh. uh, into the bunk and he answers the phone and or he's the second one to answer it's the first one I think gets a, a, a hamburger and like everybody just hordes around that was like <laughs> disturbing how everyone was going after those fries I was concerned that yeah. they're not feeding them all the time but no, that's another thing about the production apparently all they had was really wet oatmeal in the morning and yeah. then they got rice egg <laughs> slurry to oh. eat outside of that and then uh, an additional hard-boiled egg i think um but it was like the minimal sort of sustenance that they were given they weren't starving them but they definitely weren't um feeding them well and that's yeah. why when they do eventually get to the we have a treat for you the picnic it was that impressive but i do want to talk before that uh move on from husnin and his phone call and how ultimately he's forced to then get somebody else to pick up the phone or mm-hmm. he's el- eliminated and because he gave away what they told him on the phone on his face, everyone just like disperses and won't even get close to him. And then there's the one person who is willing to. And then you got Brighton saying, don't do it. Don't do it. That was. And then he, yeah. his weaselness catches up with him and then he, he's out. I, I that loved was, that. That was fun. I, I loved that moment. Um, Apparently, so- two other people picked up the phone too and were eliminated, but it wasn't shown. There was like t- the only two people that weren't kind of shown eliminated on the show show overtly. Um, also did that, but it, it was cut for time for whatever reason. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I wish I would have seen how that went down. So, so a question for you, and I, I wanted to ask earlier, um, but you were just reminding me of it when you were talking about what they were being fed. How long have they been here filming? Through say even through episode nine, how long? Because they they even say that it feels like they've been there for like months or something. Right, that's another amazing thing you learn about production is they have zero sense of time. They don't tell them what time it is. Um, for the most part, they wake them up at eight o'clock. Yeah. So if you're able to keep track of time clock, yourself yeah. from eight a.m. to when they shut off the lights at ten p.m., it's completely on you. But certainly, if you don't have a sense of time, that's messing with you. And if you don't have friends in there, that's torture. Uh, And there were days, because it was over the course of that 16 days that the entirety was filmed, there were days that nothing happened. There was no tests. There was no games. It was literally just... I mean, that's brilliant. ...hang out with each other. (laughs) It is. It is. It's brilliant. Uh, And, and like, I understand why they're doing it. it. Is it the most humane thing to do? No. But you need to remember that this isn't a job. This is a reality competition that they signed up for. They signed waivers. They knew what they were getting themselves into to some extent. And do I feel bad for them? No. <laughs> no, neither do I. Of no. course not. That's that's essentially what the producer said now that there's going to be this uh, lawsuit. Yeah, good about luck. The condition. He's like, hey, it's $4.56 million, the most any show has ever given away ever. It's not going to be a yeah. walk in the park. No. What do you expect? Um so I think they, they needed to go through some of that, 100%. Um, okay, so we move on to warships instead of tug of war. Did you miss tug of war? No, and I'll tell you why. It would have been one of the most unfair games. And yeah. I like that. So tug of war would have felt like one of the most, uh, yes, unbalanced, unfair, but... Um, the way the way that the show is moving in a different direction where they're not able to prepare. So when they're trying to make these alliances because they're building up towards something like tug of war. And I guarantee you the producers knew that that something like that would happen and, and where strength becomes 
something that um, is a deciding factor, I, do, I wouldn't have cared for that. And I love Fair. that they thought they were going to go do it. And it turned into more of a, a game of, of wits. Which was so beautiful because they were so mean to each other. A lot of them were so, like, just ruthless to each other when they were yes. getting in the lines thinking it was going to be, um, you know, tug of war, physical competition. Yeah. And then you end up with this whole line of, like, dunderhead big dudes that then got to play a strategic <laughs> yeah. game, you know? Yes. And you have it was brilliant. one of, at the time, it's funny because I've gone from, like, this person's my favorite right now. No, no, this person's my favorite. <laughs> yes. At that moment, I think B, I think her real name is Bianca. I think B, our Mensa girl, B, right? Mensa. I'm like, oh, my yeah. gosh, she's going to yeah. look at this game and just destroy them. And she crushed it. Yeah. She didn't lose any No one, hits. Right? I don't even think she got any hits. I don't know. Maybe that could be wrong. But she was so great in that game. And she gave, like, me tips. Always go for C3 first. And she hit it immediately on her first guess. But, yes. I Absolutely. She was at the, my top three favorites throughout yeah. the entirety of, yeah. of, Same. of her run, sadly. Same here. Um, I, I I loved her. It was it was it was fun to see Battleship. I was a little worried it was going to get boring, especially the first one. Kind of took so long. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to keep yeah. doing this, but they, they kind of sped it up. The show does a good job of that, as far as uh, knowing when to show something in its entirety, so you get the idea right. of it, and then just jump into like, uh, right, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. <laughs> Yeah. Apparently there was controversy behind the scenes about because this is where we lose the jerk Brighton. He's in the two-person boat and yeah. he wanted to be in this one area of the map, <laughs> but his captain, who plays all the time, right? Um, he said that. I play all the time. There was consternation over or not whether or not she should have gotten it. It seemed like nobody was arguing, but he claims now on TikTok or wherever he's doing it, Insta, that it was BS and that wasn't fair in, in that moment or huh. whatever. But I just love that it came down to his boat. His boat was what lost it. Yep. And that's like karma. He had that coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was such a joy. And then, of course, in the final one, we get it coming down to the bone with the mother and son. Right. And if the right. mother was hit, that they would have been gone. But by one, just one freaking blow, uh, they were saved. And this is kind of where we really get to know TJ, too. He becomes this very central leader figure, TJ, former basketball player. Yeah. Um, who I liked to a degree until later in the show. Yeah. And then he kind of loses me when he, the leadership stuff goes to his head. 100%. That's the exact moment where I, well, maybe not the exact moment. I think I was starting to like, I just don't like the, this guy's cockiness. But when he basically makes himself leader and then pulls everyone to a group prayer and you're like, you are not respectful of everyone who is here. That was the dumbest thing. It was, then you see people like B, um, B and then Amanda, who somebody yeah. makes it really far, who's this uh, British a blonde, long blonde haired woman who is totally underestimated. Apparently she's an engineer for the Royal Navy. Which was another such. awesome um, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you call that? Just unexpected. Like she went outside of her box. Un unstereotypical yeah. character who was really strong and really savvy. And like her in B, then going off and be like, "Oh, this is this is the way men men do it. This is we're going with the uh, yeah uh, the TJ machismo here. He's our, he's our savior, and of course." He's going to get his. He's going to get his, yep. which is fun. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, so we, we ran through uh, the warship. We lose considerable amount of people. Um, this is around when we meet Mai as well. Yes. Mai becomes a big character, and yes. she connects a lot with, with TJ. But also we hear Big Chab comes up often, and I did. I have kind of like re-skimmed it now, and I'm like... Because I'm, I'm looking at these latter episodes, I'm like, have I? Did we see these people at all? And surprisingly, the people who make it to the bridge, yeah, with like two or three exceptions, you do see more than you might think you had, because they might not have gotten talking heads, um, or that pregame interviews that people get. Like Big Chad is such a big character in the show in the latter half of it, but he ne we never see his pregame interview, which I found interesting. Um, but yeah, so let's let's talk about this this fun moment where TJ then does become the leader, which ultimately lets him do this the first pick of safety because only 20, 20 people are going to go on. Yeah. Um, and this is right after kind of the girls have talked about having a girls alliance 
We got to watch out for each other. And this is also right around the time that my was talking to big chat about how TJ, he thinks he's the leader and I can't trust TJ, but then TJ picks my first. I know he completely trusts her. She's his number one. And she's behind <laughs> his back talking so much. I shit. Know. <laughs> it was my, my mate has made some sloppy mistakes in the game. Yeah. I feel like, and uh, I, I, I'm, Rooting for her, one other person, because uh, yeah. I made it to the final three. Spoiler alert. Um, but I was then shocked. Not only, okay, is she talking shit about TJ behind his back, but then all the girls had agreed, we're picking girls. If, if there's an opportunity to watch each other's back, and there's no bigger opportunity than a chain link s- schoolyard pick, you know? Yeah. Uh, she then goes and picks Big Chad, the, the biggest, strongest guy there. And breaks uh, the whole... Which it, <laughs> what like, you can't be trusted. My, weren't you yeah, listening? My. Weren't you listening? My, we're doing a <laughs> women empowerment thing here. My's like, no, nope. he's my friend. All right. Yeah. You know what? I feel bad because we did skip marbles. Um, and marbles was marbles processed by this picnic, and then it, that people was think they're going to be with brilliant. somebody that they, they want to enjoy a picnic with. And then it is, you know, one of you is going to win. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about some of the games people came up with. Uh, I really love this Irish guy in it. I can't I can't remember. His oh, name. yeah. Uh, Mikey. Was. I think his name is Mikey. Mikey. Yeah. Mikey is very cool, dude. Um, big Chad was a big fan of him, too. He seemed really well liked for the most part. But I, I like the game that they played. Whereas they waited to the last minute and they said, okay, one marble each, whoever gets closest to the wall, that's that. Right, you know? right. Especially if you're playing with somebody that you like, uh, that you're friends with, I-, I would I would simplify it and do something along those lines. Um, versus, who did we have? We had this real jerk character, 065, who up to then actually had seemed kind of like a nice, nice guy, but he's then up against um, this girl who says, I don't want to play any game. We're throwing. throwing. Yes, yes, yes. He was exactly what I was talking about a little bit ago about r- r- like turning back into a child and pouting. You know, I'm not doing, I'm not going, and then eating the clock up. And it was just like, uh, you're ruining this for yourself too. And I don't understand that. The, ch- the times that people are so selfish that they're willing to sacrifice themselves just because they don't want to um, compromise. That's all it is. They're not willing to compromise. Yeah. I mean, he shot himself in the foot. I felt so bad for her. Agreed. Especially because at the game, he couldn't even acknowledge that she did win. I in, know. In reality, it was whoever got the most of two uh, two throws into this little bucket and they kept missing or whatever, but he was the one that threw first. So I think it was like on their fourth attempt each on her throw, after he'd thrown that fourth round, she got an in. Yeah. And then he got his in at the top of the fifth round. So they didn't get one in after that. She won. She won because they had four turns of those Absolutely. four turns. She's the only one that had got one in, but he refused to let her go on. That dude deserves to be savaged online yeah. uh, for that because that was just selfish, so selfish, selfish mean, cruel. I mean, greedy. I, 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 I respected to a degree what he was doing because I knew she would eventually cave, and I knew she, she did. Um, but not enough time, I guess. Not enough but time, right. When he then went that extra mile to say, you know what, I don't even care. You're screwed. We're both screwed. That's not the case with another duo that I found really fun to watch in their interaction. Um, we, we meet Jackie, who's one of the most liked characters oh, on the show. Right. She has a hearing issue. She signs. Um, yes. She's she's loved by uh, so many people, specifically like um, Sam, who's this big lumberjack bearded guy. Yeah. We got Phil with the long hair. I love Phil. I can't wait to talk about Phil. Um, yeah. Allie, everyone just everyone loved Jackie, and then you got this guy who is featured considerably through the show as like a guy who chimes in when something happens to mm. one of the characters that we've seen. He's this older gentleman, claims also to have hearing problems, I think he a hearing aid. Um, but sh- they were kind of talking about why it was important for them to play, and she said, Well, I'm trying to be representative of the hearing impaired community. He's like, Were well, you gonna play that card? I'm deaf. Yeah. But he's also like seventy. Um, completely, so yeah. 
completely He was so ignorant. mean to her. Um, he was so mean. Yeah, yeah. Completely um, ignorant, though, to what she was saying and, and what she was trying to do. And, man, did he come off as, as a villain, like you were saying earlier. But he hadn't up till then. Right. That's what bummed me out. It was like, I wanted to like this guy because, for the most part— it seemed like he was liked. He would, yeah. he would chime in with like supportive things for the most part. But then when it got down to one v one, like like we talked about, true colors come through. The only thing I will credit him for, he, he was a he was a bad sport, you know. At the oh, end, right, yes. But versus versus the other guy who let them both die, at least he conceded that he had lost in the uh, game yeah. that they played. I was you know? afraid he wasn't going to either. Um, and, and there was a moment there because it seemed so like crazy that he had this complete turn on on Jackie that I thought oh maybe he's doing a thing where he's like we're friends but I'm going to I'm going to be mean to make this easier for you no he was just a dick 100% dick he was what when people get killed in the marble game with a squib his was the most satisfying yes, so good yes. one and I, burst <laughs> Because he, you could just tell he was so sour about it. Oh, he yeah. was so salty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was he, he was also <laughs> playing cards himself. He was playing the card, well, I don't have any money for retirement. And, yeah. well, yeah, that's really unfortunate, but we're not going to like... on you, guy. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I, I, I don't think you're allowed to use that card. You're like, well, I don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, we're all trying to, to, to win this money. We're not going to just be like, oh, you know what? Let this guy through because he needs to retire. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, we don't yeah, know what was, decisions was you've made in your life to get you to this point. Ugh. I, I do like that we had seen him prior to that, though, to kind of like really flip our expectations of him because I yeah. thought he was going to be kind of a gentleman and a nice guy. Anyways. No, um, true colors. The most important marble game played, though, was obviously mom and son. Yeah. Leanne and Trey. Trey yes. Um, and I love that she didn't just give it to him like she could have. Yeah, that was um, it was really really weird to watch. Because I don't know about you, I also kind of, but, but but did you in that moment say like, oh my gosh, what if it was me like playing my mom in this game? You know, like <laughs> what, what would you do in this situation? Well, first of all, my mom wouldn't have gone on a reality show. I don't think. I don't think my mom might have. <laughs> certainly, like ten years ago, I think she would have. Yeah. Um, I think she would have talked herself out of the game. She would have been too loud, honestly. Sorry, <laughs> mom. Uh, but my mom's the type of person who will talk to people on the bus, you know. Sure, uh, sure, so. sure. Um, I just would have had a really yeah. tough time with this game playing my mom. I think. I, I, yeah, I completely agree. I, I like th they had more of a dynamic game in that it was like a, a big target with multiple points. Yes, you know. Yes, in the middle was worth three. The one around it, two, and then one for the bigger one. Love that. Especially satisfying when you see him, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Absolutely win by getting right in the middle. Right. You know, definitively. Oh, uh, That's yes. the word I'm definitively, definitively win it there. Bullseye. Getting that last one at yeah. the end. I will say he was a little too happy, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was sad for her. She was devastated. She's crying, and he's trying not to, like, smile. And I know. I'm sorry I won and sort then, of thing. And then not to jump too far ahead, but when it, it's always funny to me, like when they've just lost one of their friends or loved ones, whatever, and then they're back in the in the, the um, bunker and they're like already forgotten about them. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, that ten thousand dollars up there. That's my mom. That's you, mom. And I'm like, that was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Trey, since um, his mom does die at this point, uh, he pr just prior to that had lost. Figgy, who literally, I think, I think that was the only potential romantic connection. Yeah, that you said? yeah I mean, it wasn't overt agree. at all, but I feel like if she had stayed, something could have developed. I mean, it's a, it's a oh, lot, oh, these oh. sorts of games that happens all the time, and I was shocked to see none of that except maybe a little. With yes, it. but do you remember after that? After I think she's gone, we get an interview, a testimonial, if you will, from Trey, where he's talking about how he uh, previously, like last year, had a collapsed lung and was in the hospital, and his mom and girlfriend or fiance whoever uh, yes so he did already have or does have a significant okay. other All but right. i was okay. completely right there with you i thought there was something there like i know and he's especially like especially when he asks her to watch sorry, yes yes no you're gonna say the same thing if something happens to me yeah. 
And she was like, um, duh. It yeah. was like, why is that even a question? We're so bonded at this point. Yeah. Um, but that was, she was a hard one to see go because, you know, she seemed nice. I liked anyone that kind of like snuggled up to the mom and mom and son. Yeah. Um, yeah. Including somebody who makes it really far. Who you only see featured maybe talking to Trey and the mom with maybe one other except just Roland is this guy with, uh, like, uh, Oh, yeah. Hunter. He's we got braids. Cross braided hair. Yeah. He kept doing a lot of this douches thing yes. with his fingers. Douches. Um, I didn't hate him because he is the one that saves Trey in the chain link. He brings Trey along. You're right. You're um, right. Going back to the chain link, were there any other surprises for you or interesting moments in the chain link? Because um, you got. May pick and Chad. Right. That's a big surprise. I think the only thing that really jumped out at me is after you. Th- there was two instances where, you know, we have this really great moment where the women are like, let's stick together. And it was twice where women like kind of like went against this bond. Yes. And, and you're like, Jackie, which Jackie, she at least to her credit yes. goes and turns to Amanda, who'd picked her and said, do you think it's OK if I pick a boy yeah, as long as yeah. I make, tell him to pick a girl? Um, and then she and does. Goodness she did because she picked Phil. And, and I love Phil. And then Phil. And I'm so happy. Phil has to pick a, or Phil did pick a female. He did. Yeah. Uh, he lived up. He lived up to his. It his was. It was interesting to me though. Like it's just funny. And then of course at the very end, I love how they're all doing the math. And this is when we have our two last gang boo gang members. Yeah, Perna. Um, Dan. Dan and Perna. Dan and Perna. And I was. I was. I once I lost Rick. I was like, okay, I gotta be. I'm bald with my baldy brethren here. Uh, <laughs> I'm bored with my baldy brethren rather. And I was all in on Dan. And then to see him just miss making it by one because he knew if Perna got picked, he'd be picked. But since Perna was picked last, he just missed it. That was crazy. What's so funny is the person that Trey picked um, was this this kid James. Who doesn't pop up a lot, but he's always kind of like in the in the foreground um, yeah. with the mom and the son. Um, and then when we get to the bridge, he's the last plank, oh, and he goes. Right. <laughs> he was just <laughs> such a soft character, I guess you want to, would call him. He, he's he just was, very he, scared. I just called him like he's just a sad boy. He was just yeah, always such a sad. sad boy. He was constantly crying, <laughs> or he looked like he was about to cry. And he just seemed like yeah. I really wanted him to to continue on. But there's a certain point where I, you just I don't think he had what it took either to go all the way. No, he definitely didn't. And I mean, the, his whole reasoning for picking him was uh, my mom my would mom. not be okay with yeah. me for not picking. Right, because I think picking. he was kind of like their adopted. Yes, you know, you, she was clearly adopted. looking out for him. <laughs> right. Okay, let's discuss the claw machine. I, first of all, I'm very curious. I'm not very good at the claw machine. How long did it no. take? No, they, for them to actually cl- pick pick. You know, grab one. I was thinking not, the same not, thing, not. and this is what I'm going to suggest, and I don't know if this is real, but the claw machines you see or play in, like, say, arcades or lobbies or wherever you are, those are designed to not try and pick something yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> right. Those, those fair. clasp down hard to to not grab something. And then kind of get soft as they're coming Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking this one was just a working one. This one just did yep. the thing. And I thought it was a really clever, yep. fun way to, you know, decide the order. And this was really intense, this scene. 20 people, right? We got down to 20 people, 20 um, suggestions, really. Like, or you're, you're picking, yeah. you get to pick. 20 slots. Yes. Yeah, you get to... You go up, pick the claw, get the number, and then you get to assign the number to people. Um, and you, you're absolutely right. What I what I love so much about what, how this show works is that the games are equally as intense to the lead up to the games, yeah. or how yep. the games uh, are, are played in a, in a fair manner, random fair, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the claw machine was no exception to that. May is the first to pick, and then. I didn't see this coming, especially because of the second time she's betraying the girls. She gives uh, Marina, I want to say, uh, number four. I don't know if you remember Marina. Um, yeah, no, not, not no. Four, maybe five, five, or, really early. I think it is four because she goes right after Trey, who gets number three. 
uh, unfortunately for Trey. Um, but we got to talk about this controversy um, on the bridge. Because this is this is what this is the hot topic right now. Oh I'm yeah, telling. this was huge. Um, now I just want to confirm names here because I thought her name was Ashley. Is it Ashley? Uh, she she's part of the corner crew. I want to say she was initially in with the Irish guy. So let's walk through the let's walk through the scenario and, and see if we're talking about the exact same moment because I thought Trey. Well, first of all, the way that they just oh no, Ashley, Ashley is Ashley is the the villain. Yes, one hundred percent. Yes, I'm saying yeah. Marina was the first one given the number. I'm sorry, and okay. she was the one that actually did what she was supposed to do. That they all agreed to do. Yes, was take a fifty fifty chance. So that makes it fair, and then the numbers almost become moot with the exception of the final three, since there's seventeen planks. Yeah, okay. and if you all just do one, then it's fair, and you get a fifty fifty chance versus that first person being guaranteed to go. Uh, and granted, TJ was number one given that number uh, by Jackie. <laughs> Which I kind of found surprising. Yeah. That was really more ruthless from her than I anticipated. I agree. Um, but they both go. They both go on the plank. Jackie does as well. I like Jackie, but, you know, uh, I, I was totally fine with her uh, giving him one, if I'm honest with you. But I wasn't surprised when she went, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I was just really surprised that they actually all agreed. Well... <laughs> Did they all agree that the this was a really clever way of doing this? And it was fair. It was fair. And it really was. TJ, I was surprised that the producers let them do it. I honestly. agree. I agree. But I think, you know, they must have. Yeah, there was a part yeah. of me that I'm like, are they are the producers just controlling like the is there like a, a button where they just like a trap door? No, no, there was an adju there was adjudicator there who was in, in charge of making sure all the games were, were fair and outside okay. third party adjudicator. Um, so I, I'm going to run with that. This wasn't rigged. I don't think it was rigged, especially based on who we're seeing in the end. Right. To be honest right. with you, I don't think it was rigged. Um, some people, if, if my wins, maybe <laughs> because well, she has had some very lucky moments despite making big mistakes. Yeah. Um, but what we're bearing the lead here, they were supposed yes. to each choose 50-50, take one step on the bridge. Um, we lose TJ. We lose the next guy. Trey finally is number three, and then he gets his first one. He gets the right plank. Yeah. And behind him is Ashley. Now it's up to and Ashley. She yes. Ain't, she ain't going to overtake him like everyone else had promised to do. She's and not going to do it. And why does no one remember this? Because to me... It doesn't feel like they remembered that she wasn't a team player here. And 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 Mai was the only one who called her out on her bullshit because this was not well, cool. Yeah. And like the time was being eaten up. Everyone needs to go here. Trey sacrifices himself basically. And it was a really twice. I wanted him to just like turn around and like give 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 um the fingers going down, <laughs> you know? But I thought it was You're right. really After bogus. The fact it seemed like everybody just completely forgot. In the moment, though, because I went back and I rewatched this particular scene, because I was confused about what she was telling Mai um, afterwards when Mai was forced to apologize. Or right. Whatever. Ridiculous. Um, when she became number one, when she was first in line after Trey had done three, essentially, and lost his third choice, and he fell through, yeah. um, she was forced to make a choice. Nobody overtook her then. She did, when Trey was gone, take a chance. Yes. But she was supposed to have done that, and Trey was supposed to have been safe. And everybody yeah. else abided by those rules except her. And in the background, it was Phil and the British guy, Elliot, who were like, this is on her. Trey going yes, is on her. Yes, yes. And so was mine. But then those guys really kind of like didn't talk about it after the fact. But of course, my does. But it was completely unfair. I hate, I hated Ashley. But what's so funny is when I was rewatching it, she's yeah. not villainous no. up until then. She's no. actually fairly likable up until then, especially when she wins her marbles and she takes out yeah. like, one of her close friends. Yeah. I mean, it's heartfelt and I did feel for her. But when she did that, and then at the end of episode five, when she's talking about 
uh, Big Chad stupid nominating himself in the dice game. Right. And then like they cut the sh- that episode with her going, <laughs> she's like smiling about it. She's she's mainly like laugh smiling yeah, about Big yeah. Chad having made a huge mistake, uh, even though he was actually he loved my and my head in this dice game where essentially you roll a six when they were down to 12 after the bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, if you roll a six, you either nominate yourself or you nominate somebody right. else. You go. If it lands on that, depending on if you nominate yourself, everyone agreed at the beginning. Okay. We're all going to nominate ourselves. Cause then it's, it's on us. We're sending ourselves up versus sending somebody else. Up. Right. Mai's the first one to go. She picks to be the leader again or whatever. Uh, and then she nominates Ashley and I was like, hell yeah, my, that's yes, exactly what you should but do. But everybody turns on her. They turned on her. Yeah. They turned on her. That being said, early on, I want to say episode six or seven even, people were like, Mai's going to take it all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mai yeah. was. They were, they were saying that, you know, she's got the right mind and, and like headspace for this. Um, not a quote, but I completely agreed. Given her past, having like grown up in wartime, yeah. um, I, I, was it Korea? Uh, no, it Vietnam? I, I'm not exactly sure. No, I think it was Vietnam. Vietnam. And I think, you okay. know, she's been in the, the, the Navy for 20 years. Right, right. And she, um, you know. So she's been through hell. And this is hell, literally. Yeah. So it does make sense that she would have gotten as far as she did. But this is where we lose. I mean, I was really, really rooting for men to be, honestly. And then yes, it's so yes. sad because she's like, I play she, dice all the time and I'm so good at rolling sixes. But this yeah. is not the time. And then she rolls she a six. She calls it. Gone. She calls it. And then we lose our last gang bull gang member. Yeah, burn up. Burn up. <laughs> Perna, oh, no. man, that guy, you didn't really know how sweet he was until like these last couple episodes. You just knew him as part of the gang in the corner. Um, but what did you what did you think about all of this good natured fairness that I didn't anticipate? Certainly isn't in the show. I didn't either. I don't think I would have want to been on board with it myself. No, you know, no, but I've thought about this, too. Uh, I wouldn't have been. But, you know, if you're not. They all look at you and you're like, you're the outsider. So you kind of just have to be able to go with the flow. And I think that's actually Phil's mind. I think that's That's what Phil Phil says. I'm just going to go with the flow. But the thing about it is I, I didn't see it coming either. Like all this, like these friendships and and like new best friends forever evolving here. I I think it's going to make everything harder for them or it has, it has. Yeah, I think so too. But at the same time, um, if if you're because we lost Roland there, no, we didn't lose Roland there. My bad. Okay, so we lost three people there, and now we're down to nine, and then we go to the gifts. Yeah, which is uh, basically gift. heads up, seven up. <laughs> kind of. You know, if you think yeah. about it, you're, you're like, oh, um, I gotta decide who who picked me or whatever. Um, right. This was really fun and. For some reason, Phil made it very theatrical, like a like a court session. <laughs> it was so funny. I loved how much they got to pontificate yes. about who who possibly well was. I wasn't expect- I thought they'd be sitting in their in their yeah, seats, like, just mm, like, oh, yeah. I think it was mine. Right. But instead, they walk out. Hmm, I say, I say, I do declare. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot. That it was mine. There was a lot. It was it was um, it was fun to actually see there's there's like the voiceover going on um and then there's them actually uh working through their their method or like why they believed and i thought that was really fun right. too like um because i think my was like the only one who really knew the game like she called she it crushed it she crushed it filled it filled it too filled it really well as well but let's go through let's go through because there's not that that many okay. gifts to go through Okay, so Mai's the first one, and she puts it on Roland's desk. Right, and which at the end of the episode, she says she didn't. Why did she do that? What was the point of that? To what? To, I don't understand. To tell them that she didn't? To lie to, to lie to Phil and Sam about, because it took her 10 years to come up with, oh, oh, no, I gave it. Who did I give it to? Huh? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Amanda. Right. Amanda and did like, after she remembered yeah. her name. No, I it was I think it's just my, really weird. This is my play in the game. And I don't I, I think it, it looks better that that my didn't um like go after some. I think she's just feeling very defensive. Go after somebody that really trusted yes, her. Yes, yes. Because then they then they won't be able to okay. trust her. I, I think I think she's just but playing she, the game. 
She executed it poorly, though. I think, in theory, you're absolutely right. Her saying it was Amanda is the right move if it didn't take her so right. long to do it. Right. She should have anticipated that. Um, but it was a good move going for Roland because they did have that bond. She did say, who's going to who's gonna do your hair? Yeah. And I don't think for a and second he thought it was no, her. No, he even said, oh, you're right. You're, you're good. You'd never do this. It's like, oh, no. You got, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That was a sad one because I did like Roland. I, I thought he was a nice I guy. thought he was funny, uh, especially in his last uh, couple episodes. But, you know, I think... My shouldn't feel as bad as she does. I mean, you're not all going to end up splitting this money. So right. who cares if you don't become best friends with these last two dudes at the very end? Yeah. Don't you rather have 4.5? Uh, yeah. yeah. I also, I do appreciate that they didn't reveal who did actually put the gift. You know, I oh, think I agree. Really I agree. Aided some, some of the players. Because next you have Hallie... Um, who really doesn't pop up much until the last three episodes and to yeah. make it so far. But she did have a, a strong presence in the la- latter episodes, and apparently she's a twin, I guess. And yeah, and she's a... Opposite of her twin. Chicagoan. That's right, that's right. I got on board with her when I found out she was Chicagoan. <laughs> yeah. And she was, uh, like, even-tempered and seemed like everyone was pretty chill with her. But she betrayed the girls yeah. by putting the gift on Amanda's desk. And I didn't see that coming. But it was a smart move. It definitely was. Yeah, I, 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 I um, what's I gonna say about Hallie? I, I, I didn't. I don't think I, I trusted her, because I think she. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I could see that. I could see that. Um, and then next you got Elliot, which is our British guy, who I feel like Hallie is. Him and Hallie are. Or I'm sorry, Hallie and him were not featured too much until those latter episodes right. since they do make it to the final nine um and i liked him a lot because he was the one saying oh ashley is horrible on the bridge and all that stuff that's that's no good and it was his idea to do it the fair way but the way he sweat when he put the put the gift on may's dad oh. my's desk yep uh he he had so many tells every time I know. she looked at him he's like uh, uh, scratching his beard <laughs> biting his hair just like literally looked like he was sweating um and my knew it yeah she knew it was him fidgeting uh, yeah I, I, he, that was a dumb move on his part i would never have put the gift on my's desk ever no matter who i was uh well, even Ashley she's says smart. that. She's like, damn. She, yeah. <laughs> Everyone is impressed and I think secretly scared of her now. Yeah. Plus, I don't know if you remember, but it, it might have been because he gave himself away. He like, when he got out of his chair, you have to be very nimble to get yes. out of his chair. Because people can still hear, yes. even though they're blindfolded. Yes. He, he fumbled out of that chair. I know. Probably stomping around. You could see um, some people were smart when you start looking at their faces that when you take a blindfold off, your eyes need to adjust to the light, right? Right. And but, if your eyes weren't adjusting yeah, to it, you probably right. just had it off, you know? I don't know. That's true. That's true. Then you got Rose, who was picked to pick somebody, and she picks Phil. And Phil straight up knows immediately that it's her. He's like, you're the only one in here that I haven't gotten to know. Uh, and that's on me. He was so sweet about yeah. it, too. And that's on me. I should have approached you, yeah. but I think it was you. And it was. And, you know, not, I wasn't going to miss Rose. I, she didn't really make an impact for me. No. No. Um, and, no, go ahead. Then you got Ashley, our supervillain, <laughs> who thinks she's being smart here yeah. by picking Phil again. And it blows up in her face. Yep. He knew it. I, this is this is why I think I want Phil to win. Yeah, I do want Phil All to win. Right. He, he's he's who I think would be the best win. But we'll, we'll talk about what we think is going to go on in this final challenge. Um, but before we do that, I just want to then Phil um, got the he gave it to Hallie, right? He gave it to Hallie. Phil yes. finally was able to give a gift. Yes. He gave it to Hallie, and. She thought it was my, and that was a huge mistake. And it's, I think this is the instance where she thought there was loyalty that she clearly didn't have for Amanda. So why she would then think it was my, I don't know. I think that was a big blunder. But I will say, I thought, because we did, that was the first one where we were playing too. We didn't know who put Yeah, it that was on. a fun edit the way they did that too. I thought, I liked that. 
I thought it was Sam. I did not think it was Phil at all. Well, because going off of what Mai was just describing, I saw Phil. He was fidgeting a little bit. He was playing with his. Like, yeah, I, I think um, I was like, it could have been Sam, but I, I in my gut, I was like, oh, it, it's it's Phil. He seems so. Y- y- yeah, in retrospect, you're right it, because he was so like not me, not me, and then in that moment, he was the opposite of how he'd been after everything. Yeah. It, she should have seen that. And I thought it was fun how people were taking note of whether or not somebody's shirt was tucked in. Yep. And if they'd stood up and such. That's true. Yeah. Uh, it was fun. I mean, it's these little kids' games to then have $4.56 million on the lines playing these heads up, seven up sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's just blowing. I know. I know. Uh, so we got our final three. We have Phil, who is this really likable guy, didn't make an enemy the entirety of the show. Um, looks like he's the lost member from what Guns N' Roses or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he, his buddy, Sam, who's this lumberjack who I feel like we haven't seen enough of to make him the winner's pick. If you're considering an edgic is what they call it. Like when the edit is showing you when the edit is showing you who the winner's going right, to be. Right, right, right. I don't feel like that's the case. Um, but the reason I think that there is a strong chance for Sam to win is the last game, uh, squid game. Cause they're all going to have their dinner. And certainly in the show and the dinner, people are stabbing each other and the girl dies during the dinner or whatever. Yeah. And that's the final two for the squid game. But I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think there's going to be anything along those lines at the dinner, but I don't know. Um, but if it does come down to, ju- it's going to come down to the, the squid game. It's a physical thing. Right. I think because it's whoever is able to touch the top of the squid's head. I think you're right. Uh, I need to first. I want to rewatch the series and now. <laughs> Sam is by far the strongest of the three of them. So yeah. if it is brute strength there at the end, which I think there's a, ch- a chance of, he's going to take yeah, it. Yeah, he's pretty jacked. Phil has some limberness and some agility that I'm unaware of, or if my can like tumble underneath his lanky legs or something or some <laughs> acrobatics to get there. <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the final three mostly because I, I like Phil and my so much. Yeah. Agree. I don't really care about Sam. I, I agree. Uh, I mean, Sam has a, a sad story, um, you know, being kind of, Oh, that's true. He does. By He's his kind of dejected fam- from yeah. his family. Yeah. So I think yeah, that is any one of them is deserving in my opinion. Yeah, and then I think that also speaks to why Sam and Phil's connection is so strong. Yeah. Um, beyond the LGBTQ stuff, it's just the Phil talked about being bullied so much. They have they they can bond based on that. That's right. And Mai's like really kind of the strong, independent person comparatively. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I can't wait to watch in the six. We got we got the family coming out, and uh, it, it, I can imagine what the fictional world of the hunger games felt like for the viewers because i was just locked in and caring so much (laughs) and wanting to send like uh advantages to people uh yeah i just i I loved it i'm just really hoping they're gonna get a second season and these stupid lawsuits don't prevent it from being a yearly thing yeah let's let's hope people you know like aren't sore losers because clearly they're upset they didn't make it into the series and they're just trying to find a way to sue netflix but i i right. think you're gonna get multiple seasons out of this i think netflix will find a way because i guarantee you it is getting the viewers yes yeah it's number one it's been number one yeah so that's that thanks for listening to this ridiculously that's long that. cast well there was Our a lot to talk viewers. about there was a lot to talk about it really is there was a lot that we didn't talk about too there's that um, yeah <laughs> stand out who's your favorite of uh, the, uh up to the final three over the course of the entire season who's your number i one still think it's b i think i really was rooting Mensa for her b is amazing yeah yeah. Mensa uh, B. Uh, she and Mom Leanne have since met up. I saw some uh, really something on social media where they're now they're now friends in real life. So That's very fun. Out in I like real that. Time. Um, I, you know, I got it. I'm partial to Rick because I, I got that. <laughs> yeah. so. I want to see Rick back. All right. Second chancers. Yeah. Give Rick <laughs> another chance. Till next That's time. That's certainly a likes, subscribe, and all that jazz. And until the next time, stay alive. 